Hello everyone. Today I'm going to tell you three more things you might miss when you come to Edinburgh. Now, this is uh, a funny one we're going to start off with. Just because I, I, I was looking up, you know, little things that you might miss. And this is not something you'd come to see. Why would you? But it's interesting to tell you. I am at the far east end of Princess Street right now. It's literally the start of Princess Street, okay? Well, actually, that's the start of Princess Street, I think. There's the Apple shop, there's the Balmoral Hotel. Um, and what I'm actually here to show you is not that building right there, which is the City Archive of Birth and Death. So not that beautiful statue right there, but this. This is what I'm here to show you. This pole right here. This bollard in the middle of the street. I know this might not seem exciting, but give me a minute, okay? Just just trust me. This bollard marks the centre of Edinburgh. Yep, I know. You'd think it would be more grand or or more lovely, but no. Nope. Now, I don't mean it marks the geographical centre of Edinburgh, because it doesn't. Uh, it marks the centre of Edinburgh because this is the point of the first general post office in Edinburgh, right here. I do know that that used to be the post office. I don't know if it was the first building to be the post office, but I do remember that being the GPO, the general post office. But that pole there marks the centre of Edinburgh. So from this pole, if you are coming to Edinburgh from anywhere, and you know the road signs will say 10 miles to Edinburgh, 50 miles to Edinburgh, 100 miles, that's what they're measuring to, that pole right there. Also, um, if you're not from the UK, then I don't quite know how to describe it, area code, it's not area code before, but a postal code, postcode, um, zonal codes, things like that, that is where they all radiate out from in Edinburgh. So the further out you get from Edinburgh, the higher your number, so anywhere here right now is EH1, and then gradually as you get further out in a circle, I'm not sure how they work it, but EH1, EH2, EH3, EH4, all the way up to quite high, I don't know what it goes up to, but all points radiate out from that point. That's where all the postcodes start from, that's where we measure the distance to, because that's the original site of the post office. See that? Look at it. That marks the centre. Like I said, not the geographical centre, but what was marked as the centre of town. No one cares. No one cares. Everyone's just walking past. But they don't know. They just don't know. We need to give this post some love, people. This post is important. Here's something else you don't want to miss if you come to Edinburgh. Davy the Piper. Look at him. Hard at work, as always. Piping away. And people are giving him a pound! Yay, that's my favourite person. Gave him a pound. Always there. Always working. Next up, I have come to St Cuthbert's uh, Kirkyard, which is at the far west end of uh, Princess Street. <coughs> <coughs> This is the one that's right beside the uh, Ross Fountain that I showed you a few weeks ago. The reason we're in here is to show you this. Now you might see these towers at various points in Edinburgh, at various kirkyards. You can definitely see them across, um, across here anyway. These are watchtowers. These are old watchtowers from the Resurrectionists. So, a little bit of history, you know. In 1832, medical schools in the United Kingdom were only allowed to use corpses of executed criminals. This is uh, because of the Anatomy Act. As a result, you know, all these medical schools were struggling to get bodies and popped up the role of resurrectionists, or grave robbers as the slang would be, where people would sneak into graveyards such as this and try to rob graves, take bodies and would sell them to the medical practitioners. I'm sure you've all heard of Mr. Birkin Hare, who at some point I will do the full story of them. However, the city of Edinburgh tried lots of different ways to stop, and one of the ways that they came up with is these, these watchtowers. So people would be in there at night time, watching the graves, watching the graveyard here to see that, you know, no one was 
trying to steal graves. The one downside about this was the um, the fact that a body, a good quality body, would get 10 shillings, which for someone there could be like three, four weeks worth of wages. So it was actually really easy for the people, the resurrectionists, to bribe the watchtower guards to let them come in and steal a body. Um, so as great as the idea was, it didn't always work so well. But you can find these about town a couple of times. So if you're here, make sure you try to keep an eye out for the watchtowers. There's something always very beautiful and solemn of a grave, graveyard as well, don't you think? It's quite a calm, serene place. And we're right beside Princess Street. Princess Street is right there. Literally right there. Princess Street Gardens is right there. Edinburgh Castle is right there. Literally, if it wasn't for the trees and a building or two, you would see them in all their glory. But still, nice and calm. Kind of flying through these stories today, but again, these are just three little things that if you're wandering about with your friends, these are cool little stories to tell people, don't you think? Oh, you know what that is? That's because of the Resurrectionists. You know what that is that no one's looking at? That's the centre of Edinburgh. One more thing to show you, and we've got to head up to the Royal Mile. Just an extra bit, whilst we're walking, that's, in, that's the Kirkyard where we've just been. This here is the car park from Train Spotting 2, where uh, Renton and Begbie, you know, have their bit kerfuffle. But, look at that. Look at that view right there, just towering over us. I know I love it, I know I go on about it, but it's a beautiful big castle. So, for the last thing you might miss, we're going to revisit somewhere we've been already. Everyone remember this? John Knox House? If you haven't seen the video where we got an exclusive look inside John Knox House, I will leave a link to that video right now. Plus, I got to go upstairs and ring the old bell and mark the entrance to Edinburgh. However, John Knox, an incredibly influential man in Scottish history, and not only Scottish history, but world history, and you would think someone who had such an impact on the world would have quite an impressive grave. However, we're going to head back up the Royal Mile, we're going to go to St Giles Cathedral, and we're going to go to the back of St Giles Cathedral to show you exactly where that massively important monument is. Royal Mile is right there. St Giles Cathedral, you can see the festival still on. Street performers, it's really, really busy, but where we're going is quiet. So, here we are, St Giles Cathedral, Royal Mile, right there. That's the heart of Midlothian there, St Giles Cathedral, and we're going to go to the back of St Giles Cathedral. Now, you have to go back in time in your brain a little bit, and remember that this used to be a graveyard. Many, 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 many moons ago, this was a graveyard beside St Giles Cathedral as the bells chime so we're at the back end of it and we're going to a spot on the ground at Carpen, Carping Park Carping Parking Space 23 with this right here the above stone which is that square right there marks the approximate site of the burial in St Giles Graveyard, which was this car park right here at the back of St Giles Cathedral there. And that was the one o'clock gun going off there, did you hear that? Where were we? Marks the approximate site of the burial in St Giles Graveyard of John Knox, the greatest Scottish divine who died 24th of November, 1572. Remember John Knox? Obviously we've just been to his house to tell you that's who we're going to talk about. That marks the site of where his grave is, or was, and that's what that says. I bumped into um, another clan Broodford, an Edinburgh resident, about two weeks ago, who was out with his wife, warning about the festival. I had a nice little chat with him, and we spoke about this here, John Knox's grave. And he told me that he thinks that John Knox uh, and the other uh, grave sites here were moved to, I think he said Greyfriars Kirkyard. 
I don't know if that's correct or not, so I, I just, I'm just regurgitating information that that, that gentleman told me. Um, but, no matter what, that was the original site of his graveyard. And it's a car park. And you can completely miss it, because the festival's going on, so this shows how much you completely miss it. The Royal Mile is chock a block with people, and it's literally on the other side of that building. There's no one here. And a very, very important person in not only Scottish history, but world history, really, as I've said before. Was buried in a, in a car park. No one knows. No one can see it. If we pe take a peek around this corner here, you can see. I mean, there's a couple of tours starting to head this way. I'm going to guarantee that this tour is going to head to the graveyard, the gravestone eventually. So there you have it, guys. Three little stories, little things that you might miss if you're wandering around Edinburgh. You know, the the, the GPO, the the centre of town pole is one that most people will just walk past. And truthfully, it's not something that it's not exciting to look at. It's just one of these tiny little facts that I think it's quite, if you tell people that, they'll be like, really? Oh, it's just, I, I like little things like that, it's funny. The John Knox grave, I mean, it's a shame it's a graveyard now. And like I said, I don't know if he has actually, if they have actually moved him or not. I don't know, and all the other graves that was there, I don't know if that actually happened or not. Um, but it totally makes sense that that was a graveyard. And now it's a car park, and that just, it's not as if they went, oh, we'll just bury him in the car park. It's just kind of funny that this man who influenced the way we live now and the way the world is, is in a graveyard. <laughs> and and the, the, um, the lookout towers for the resurrectionists, the grave robbers, I mean, that's brilliant. That's touching on just a nice bigger story. I've been meaning to do the Burke and Hare story for a long time. But I'm going to be completely honest with you, I'm nervous about it. Because it's such a big story, I know that if I get things wrong, I will get a row in the comments, and I don't want to. <laughs> I'm scared to get a row in the comments. Oh, wind, wind almost blew my hat off then. <laughs> um, yeah, but you know, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please remember to leave a comment. I always try to get back to all the comments in one way or another. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And if you've been watching the channel for a while, you enjoy the videos, I would love if you could do me a favor and maybe share your favorites with people or websites or things that you think might, you know, visiting Scotland groups or things like that, if you don't mind. That would mean a lot. Um, but yeah, and we'll leave it there. Till next time. Bye humans.